Powerball Saturday. <laughs> I'm already so tired. It's early in the morning, 9.30 or so, and I wanted to show you the situation here on the shed. So this is the garage here, or this is the other big shed here, and you can see the shadow from the big shed just touching now the bottom here, and the sun will actually come further this way here. Um, but it's only for a limited amount of time when we have sun on this side here of the shed. And um, as someone suggested, I don't want to paint the outside here in white or something. This is not going to happen. And well, you can still touch it. I would say at the moment it's about 40 degrees or something. So it's definitely warm, but not hot. But we have a cold wind now. It's, it's like only 25 or something at the moment. So it's rel relatively cool for summer here. Sometimes we have like 40 degrees here and then the wall gets really really hot and this is exactly the position where the power wall sits this is the meter box here and we are starting in this corner and then three meters this way this is where the power wall sits in the top part you can see the row of screws there this is where the horizontal beam sits um, but we are sitting above that line so for about i would say two hours we have full sunshine here in summertime on this wall, which heats up the inside as well, of course. Morning power wall. Nobody has finished anything here overnight. I need some, just someone who keeps working when I'm asleep. Okay, so here we can have a quick look with the uh, infrared camera. You can see the horizontal beam there in purple, right? And you can see the bottom is uninsulated, of course. This is the pure metal outside wall now. 38 on the inside there. Bottom right-hand corner is the hottest we are recording at the moment. And here at the top, you can see the power wall sheets already. Oh, here we've got a good comparison here, actually. See there on the left, this is uninsulated wall, 35. And on the right, there is the aluminium sheeting now for our power wall already and just to bring this in perspective here 26 here on the uninsulated wall and here we've got 24 very cold so that's not that's not hot at all it looks dramatic in the infrared camera but it shows just the volt uh, the temperature differences not the voltage difference <laughs> these walls they are definitely getting hot in summertime but not as hot so you can't touch them anymore you know if you park your your black car in the sun and you can't touch the paint anymore this is not what's going to happen here they are hot but not untouchable hot so even if i don't get the insulation i think someone mentioned this there is a layer of air in between which is the perfect insulation ever so it's not the end of the world if we don't get this. And it is only for a couple of months in summertime when we have this extreme heat then down here. Well, the charge controllers heat up anyway, right? So, and if you get additional heat from the back, it's not good, of course. And I had this several times here when we had the old installation with the inverter sitting on one of these panels here. Um, the panel was really, really hot. And of course, this heat then goes onto the inverter as well. And you have to throttle down your load because the inverter otherwise shuts down. So yeah, at the moment, um, not 100% sure if we, if I should wait until I get insulation or not. Well, anyways, two-phase, three-phase power. So to explain this, some people have asked, have the, some people had the question, why do you need three-phase power? I, d I don't need three-phase power. I don't need to charge the car faster. I don't want three-phase charging equipment for the Tesla. I, d I don't need all that. The, the car charges perfectly fine on 10 amps, 8 amps overnight. It is a bit more efficient charging faster. That is true. We have less losses then. But you know, this energy is coming from solar, so I don't really care. So the property has three phase power here, but they managed to get only two phases and the neutral into the house. And the three phase power was only needed here for a bore pump, which doesn't exist anymore. So in theory, we don't need three phase power, right? But I could use the three phase power to supply two phases of the three phase power to the house. 
and keep one face in here for the garage and charging the vehicle. So you've got a nice distribution then of your load across these three faces and this is probably what you want, right? You don't want to have everything on one face running. So this is the main idea and I will potentially cater for a three phase upgrade in the future then. So, well, look at this space down here. So we could potentially extend the inverters down here as well. So they're sitting nice and low and this is probably the coolest part of the garage anyway here with a concrete floor. Better airflow down here than up here definitely. So if we have two inverters up here and in the future a third one down here that'll do. Then I've got even more space underneath here. So there is always room for expansion um, further down the track. So at the moment I will probably go ahead and will mount one inverter on each of the panels so they have a nice distance to each other, they don't heat each other up. I need to put more sticky foam here on these panels and see how everything looks like. Yeah, we need to finalize the design today. But thank you so much for all your input, all your ideas and suggestions. This is quite nice actually, I like this very much. It's almost like a real-time conversation we have now. Before we start working today here on the power wall, I need to do some, um, some uh, yeah, lawn care. Hey, welcome back to another episode here from the Offkit Garage. It is Saturday. It is Powerwall Saturday. But it is already afternoon. Well, the lawn care took far longer than I was expecting it. Anyway, I have already installed the Multi Plus number one and Multi Plus number two. Yeah, I think this is a pretty clear design. So, and then here our DC distribution, our DC solar charge controllers and the switchboards with the incoming solar combiner boxes they are called as well i'm really thinking of getting this guy there up on this wall as well but this would mean i need to extend all the string solar cables coming from string one two and three um i would have to run all these strings individually from up there all the way down to the combiner box. Is this a big problem? Probably not. A lot of work. <laughs> because I need to have some sort of box up there where all the cables come in and then connect to longer cables. So I have to extend the cables basically. Um, unless I solder them and heat shrink them. <sighs> it's a bit messy, right? But it would make so much sense to have this box over here as well have all the fuses of all the solar up here. That would make totally sense. So, also... Also... And, and this one over here. Yeah, that was a comment I read under one of the videos. To have the charge controllers here all next to each other, not on top of each other, and have the distribution or switchboards, we don't want to call it, combiner boxes, all up there. And then you've got a clear direction, incoming solar, conversion to DC, MPPT solar charge controllers, battery, inverters, AC. That makes sense, right? That makes a lot more sense. Okay, so I think I've got the rough design here for this installation now. So um, we will have a trunk up here. I want to run the trunk this way and then coming down here at the end and going into a wider slotted duct down here. You know, you know these um, slotted Mm, here, here, I've got a piece here, here, something like this, you know? Oh, this is actually pretty good here. Yeah, something like this. Because we will have tons of cables coming in and out here of this trunk. I really like this design. There was a good idea to put them all in one row and have the switchboards up there. It's so clean and clearly to understand 
there's no confusion and we have one horizontal trunk there one horizontal trunk there and that's it and this one can hardly be seen because it's in the corner anyway Okay, let me walk you through. We've got our solar combiner boxes up here. We've got the incoming solar, there, the incoming solar, five strings each on each of the combiner boxes, right? And we've got only two cables coming out of each of the combiner boxes. That's what the combiner box is for. It combines our solar and parallels the strings through fusing or breakers or whatever you want to use inside and only two cables coming out as positive negative so these two cables going into the trunk below and running this way until the end of our power wall and then coming down here in the corner and going into this wider trunk which will be slotted like um like this one here like this one yeah so that's what i want to use that's what I want to use down here because as you can see with the solar charge controllers we've got heaps of cables going in and out and underneath here so the red color is the 150 volts from the solar going in going in and the 48 volt is coming out to charge our battery right and then we've got blue for data as well and down here this marks our battery shelf so we've got our data input here, our VE direct, which goes to our Rust P. And then we've got a section where our solar charge controllers go in. And this is exactly the distance. This is exactly the distance here, which we have on the bus bar as well. And next to it will be the output of our bus bar. And this is where our load is connected to. So in this case, two inverters. Yeah, and they are coming thick cables out, 70 mil, to our PCE, which is the power conversion equipment. And potentially we have a third one as well in the future. So, and hence the idea to go with the slotted duct just down here, because there will be tons of cables going in and out on both sides. And this is perfect for exactly this application. Yeah, okay, so far I think I like this very much and um, probably we have to start with the switchboard up in this corner there and have our west roof from there removed and sitting next to it and leave all these ones here for future expansions then. So we start basically with MPPT 3 and 4 because these cables are just long enough so the switchboard actually fits in this corner okay so after thinking about this for 45 minutes i think it is a very good design and i would go with it even the space in between is very nice because we may need this for further equipment we need to put in for our solar panels um, how about I drill some more holes tonight and then we um, put the solar charge controllers in tomorrow because tomorrow afternoon tomorrow evening I want to have some current flowing here again even if you just temporarily reconnect the combiner boxes here to the solar charge controllers but I want to have the battery connected tomorrow so it can charge up on Monday and Tuesday then yeah I would really like to have this all up and running temporarily tomorrow afternoon again. Oh god, this multi is already coming down. Well, um, talking about the multi pluses, they are quite heavy, so about 30 kilos per multi plus. Well, they've got these brackets at the back, you know, and I'm drilling through the material here and have nuts and washers on the back side so this is not a problem at all but these ones here they are only tapped m6 into the steel post 
which is two and a half millimeters thick. But I don't want to use the same pattern as I use over there. So I've got one, two, three, four and five screws in there, which is totally sufficient for this auto charge controllers and our switchboards up here. But well, they're, they're sitting on this side of the panel here. So they want to go that way, right? So they are pulling actually on the panel. And I probably go one, two, three, four, five until half of the panel, putting five screws in here on each side and then have another two down here because down here there will be almost no force on the screws. This one here is basically our pivot point for the whole panel. So the multi tries to do that, yeah, go away from the wall because of its weight. And these ones, they get only force from the top because of the weight. So we need to prevent the multi from tipping away from the wall. So I will put more screws up there on both sides and hope it is sufficient. Now I'm really keen to read your comments. <laughs> it will be totally sufficient. I had the other inverter mounted on the aluminium sheet as well, the same way on the steel post, only tapped into the steel posts, and it was totally fine. Once I've put the screws in there, I will show you, I will hang on the aluminium sheet up there, and you will see my feet not touching the floor here, and I'm hanging on this metal sheet, and it will not move at all. There's, there's no way. This is an M6 thread into a steel post, two and a half millimeters thick. And we've got 10 of these fasteners at the top part of this panel there. Well, leave your comments down below. And I will mount these steel brackets here in the same height. So they are actually, they, they will fit for a multi plus two. Um, because we are mounting the other inverter back here on the wall, this inverter will hang a little bit higher than, than the multi because it's smaller. And I've got some other bad news. I read the whole manual of the multi plus now. And well, the idea was to piggyback these inverters, right? To have the small inverter as the input of the big inverter. And then the big inverter adds its 5 kVA on top of that. Well, as per manual, it can't do that. It can only add th up to three kVA, not five. So this questions the whole idea if this makes actually sense. Because we will, we will, because we will lose, because we will lose five, because we will lose two key, because we will lose two kVA, right? And it, it, it takes probably only two kVA from the other inverter and then puts another three kVA on top of it and then we have 5 kVA. So I'm not sure if this is a good idea because in, in some we've got a 5 kVA inverter here and a 3 kVA inverter. So in some we have 8 kVA of total power. So I need to, I need to keep thinking about this a little bit more and see if, if it makes sense to do that actually it would be good just for the sake of doing it to see if it all works and play around with the settings and and get this all up and running but from a practical perspective it doesn't make sense i think it would be easier if we have them on separate circuits so t totally independent of each other but um i'm not sure yet we still have time until tomorrow <laughs> okay, I need to make a decision now. <laughs> I'm still in the garage here. It is pitch black outside. Looking at this wall here, changing things around a little bit, trying to determine what kind of trunking I need to get all the cables in. Um, well, so far, I think I will bring the solar charge controllers and the inverter on the same height and let the trunk running through the whole panel up until the AC section there. Yeah, I think, I think I've got everything together now. I think, <laughs> I'm not really 100% sure. We will see. So this one here needs to, uh, needs to come down as well. Like over here. So, same space. Yep, 
I think this will look pretty good. Okay guys, we haven't done much work today apart from drilling these holes here, but I'm glad we've got the full design now ready. I'm still waiting for your feedback tomorrow morning on Sunday, just to see if I can pick up something, maybe someone has got a good idea, which I didn't think about now. I haven't put, I haven't put any holes in these panels yet, but I will tomorrow morning after I read your comments. Probably five, six, maybe four hours after the video has been released, then I will start working here. Mounting the solar charge controllers, mounting this one there, and get the multis mounted on these panels here as well. Well, we will have at least one inverter back up and running tomorrow night, hopefully. I will reconnect everything temporarily again to the solar charge controllers, to the battery. I need to run the pool pump. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going inside now, starting editing this video here. Uh, please leave all your comments down below if you have any this slides if you have any further ideas on this whole situation here Yeah, just leave them down below. I'm always very interested to read your ideas and your suggestions All right, this was our power wall design Saturday, right? No work at all Just standing here and thinking and having our color pens with us and until power wall sunday you stay charged and safe and as always guys thank you so much for watching thanks for all your donations as well you are amazing we will see us tomorrow hopefully well let's see how far we come all right you have a good night's sleep see you tomorrow morning here's the whole show again